we ever contemplated how many are we living on Earth today? Well, if you're gonna ask me, to be honest with you, I just thought about it now. Maybe, same as you. I went to check global population count in the Worldometer site. Don't you know that as of today, we are nearly 8 billion people living on Earth? Wow, that's really a thought, isn't it? If you agree, wait, there's more. In 2015, that's 29 years from now. That means if you are on your 20s today, you will be on your 50s by then. In 2015, the world population is estimated to reach nearly 10 billion. That's 2 billion people more from today. Unfortunately, our planet can cope up with this overpopulation. Overpopulation resulted in land resource scarcity, fragmentation of farm plants, and ecological degradation such as increasing emissions, soil erosions, deforestation, and the overuse of natural resources. Although others believe that overpopulation is not the real problem here, but it's how we do stuff, what programs we prioritize, that the way to move forward is through investing in more sustainable options and processes such as climate change and access to quality education and not on decreasing the global population. Fears about overpopulation created a lot of panic and misinformation, but this isn't really how things are. Regardless, are we ready to be living in 22? We certainly won't know until we get there. Well, unless you have a time sheet. In the long run, population growth should come to an end. Of course, it won't happen. We won't let that happen. So, we have to oblige ourselves to find a solution. To manage our natural resources effectively. Especially our agricultural food production. To sustain lives. Is there any better way to do that effectively than to introduce technology in agriculture? Haven't you realized that we have never lived in a time of faster and more transformative technology innovation than today? In agriculture, we can't deny the fact that technology has greatly shaped agriculture in so many ways. From green revolution in 1960s to machine learning and automation today, these ongoing developments are growing exponentially, forever changing how farmers work and what we can all accomplish through agriculture. Previously, I was talking about the amazing decision agriculture, which showed you how it's improving the way farmers treat their crops and fields. Today, our topic is about something that is integral to precision agriculture. Let's talk about geospatial technology in agriculture. The term geospatial is used for location-based data. Geospatial data is indicated or related to a geographic location. We can think of it as cartography or map making that evolved into advanced technology that allows satellites and other unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to use digital softwares to take the image of the Earth, combine it with other data that allows us to understand Earth's attributes and characteristics. And thus, geospatial technology refers to all technologies used to acquire, manipulate, and store this kind of information. Geospatial technology is about gathering, processing, and interpretation of spatial data. According to one study, this technology represents 34% contribution to productivity, 30% to efficiency, 25% to assessment, and 8% to servicing. Geospatial data is being used in precision agriculture to determine field variability to ensure optimal use of inputs and maximize farm output. This includes Geographic Information System, or GIS. GIS is a computer system for capturing, storing, checking, and displaying data related to position on Earth's surface. It's incredibly helpful in being able to map and project current and future fluctuations in precipitation, temperature, and crop output. 
It can analyze soil data combined with historical farming practices to determine what are the best crops to plant, where they should go, and how to maintain soil nutrition levels to best benefit the plants. Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS. GNSS refers to the International Multi-Constellation Satellite System. It includes the GPS, which traditionally refers to the North American Global Positioning System or the so-called U.S. Navstar Satellite System. Other systems that are being developed by other countries are Russia's GLONASS, Europe's Galileo, China's Baidu, and India's IRNSS. GNSS is a network of satellites broadcasting timing and orbital information used for navigation and positioning measurements. In agriculture, it can help farmers in farm planning, field mapping, soil sampling, tractor guidance, crop scouting, variable rate application, and yield mapping. With the use of this technology, more precise application of pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers, and better control of the dispersion of those chemicals are possible through precision agriculture, thus reducing expenses, producing higher yield, and creating a more environmentally friendly farm. If you are confused on the difference of GIS and GNSS, you're not alone. I was too. Try to use Google Maps. You are able to see a map that shows the traffic level of a specific area, right? You can also see the terrain, street view, and even COVID-19 info. If you want to see realistic maps from satellites instead of just drone maps, it can also be seen here. Google Maps is probably the most widely used GIS platform. Therefore, GIS is a computer system that combines, stores, and analyzes data from GNSS, remote sensors, and other geospatial data sources, allowing users to visualize spatial relationships between different geospatial data types being displayed as map, graph, or chart. On the other hand, GNSS tells you your absolute location, helping you find direction to places that you want to go because it is connected to satellites to tell you where you are on the face of Earth. The satellites that are orbiting the Earth send signals that are being received by the GNSS navigation in your cars, smartphones, and other gadgets that has GNSS receiver. Earth's observations, or EO. EO is gathering information about planet Earth's physical, chemical, and biological systems via remote sensing technology. It is done using sensors placed on the ground, flown on drones or aircrafts, and not just using satellites, which is used to cover much larger regions. It is a powerful technique for continuously assessing the status of agricultural production on wide range of spatial and temporal scales. It helps farmers monitor growth, analyze fields to detect anomalies, and optimize inputs to boost yields. They gather data such as soil moisture, crop health condition, even the view of crop damage due to calamity, provide information we need to make decisions and take actions and identify problems. Internet of Things, or IoT. IoT refers to the devices that are embedded with sensor to measure and transmit data via internet. It allows remote monitoring of the graph field for factors such as light, humidity, temperature, soil moisture, chemical application, livestock health as well as weather condition, and provide this to farmers in real time. It also enables automation of the irrigation system, thereby saving time and effort invested on field. It allows farmers to track farm operations and performance and make better informed decisions to improve farm productivity. Agriculture has come a long way. By finding ways to advance agriculture, we're discovering answers to tomorrow's questions. With the use of geospatial technologies, farmers are able to understand site-specific needs of their farms. With this information that they can get in real time, they are capable of formulating and implementing management techniques that will ensure optimal use of inputs to maximize their outputs and profits. 
As presented, we see many of these emerging technologies providing great benefits. Unfortunately, though, we have to also understand that its cost and access to technology, as well as the unstable internet connectivity in some areas, this may limit our farmers and agriculturists, particularly in developing countries, benefiting from the changes brought by the modern agriculture. The future is indeed smarter. Regardless of these challenges, farmers should start to learn and understand these new technologies, embrace these new trends, and try to implement based on their capacities to maximize its benefits. Before, it's too late.